Hello students, welcome to the studio of NIOS. I am Dr. V. Suprabha, Principal Vidya School. Today we will be learning about the approaches and methods adopted by the social scientists in political science. So let us see what are the different approaches. The approaches have been divided into two different time zones. One is the traditional and one is the modern. As you can understand, traditional comes from many, many years ago when thinkers started talking about political science. Now, the traditional approach has contributions of Socrates, Plato, Aristotle and the likes. And this approach comes from the beginning of the 19th century. The set, next set is the modern approaches. As the term suggests, it is something which began around 15 to 16 centuries and it became very dominant in the 20th century. This was the era where political science was being understood. As in the traditional approach, it was more about fixed forms of the society, while in the modern approach, the understanding altered. Now, let us see, what is the difference between the traditional and modern society? When you see this, you will not find many differences, yet they differ. In the traditional society or the traditional approach, political science as a study, it was more of a study of the different governmental institutions, while in the modern approach to political science, it is a study of the power and the decision making of political behavior. So, you can see that in the traditional society, traditional approach, the government was being understood as an institution, while in modern approach, it is being observed and studied and decision making is done. In the traditional approach, there was more concentration on formal apparatus or formal forms of the government and the different institutions of the government. That was the formative times when the government was being formed. While in the modern times, it is the politics which is an activity and as a process, there is a big difference between the two. Presently, all these government institutions are already formed and hence we are now working over it, whatever has already been formed. Now, the traditional approach defines political science as subjective, theoretical. So, there is a lot of theory, the basics were being written, what political science is, how it should be. It is here imperative also to see that traditionally, it was more of a study, while in the modern times, it is more of a science. So, political study and political science, if we say that way, will also apply to it. Presently, it is more objective in nature, there is more scientific, it is more process oriented rather than purpose oriented. There is philosophies which are now being analyzed. The philosophies were written by the likes of Socrates and Plato and Aristotle, which are now being analyzed. The traditional and modern approaches also are different in the way we can observe it. The traditional, observe, traditional approach is more observe, non-observable. There is a lot of value. How the society should be, what should be the case, how people should be. That is the way the traditional approach was looked at, while the modern scenario is entirely different. So, the traditional approach is more prescriptive, normative. When I say normative, it means there are certain norms which have to be followed, while the modern is more quantitative and it is more inductive in nature. The traditional approach actually aimed at achieving a good society. A society which has certain rules and regulations, certain values, certain ethics that are needed to be followed by everyone. 
while the modern approach there is more scientific body of knowledge we can question we can ask we can find out what it is how the behavior is what are the factors that are involved and the different events that happen are also taken into care while in traditional societies those were not taken into account and the social change was controlled which presently is not so much controlled now what do we need to remember is that the difference between the traditional and approach and the modern approach are always not absolute because this is a continuation it is not that they are two different watertight compartments one flows into the other there are many many the issues of the traditional approach which are still in the present modern approach as useful as it was then there is always an interaction between the, the two categories and these are legal institutional approaches which are important in the traditional approach while behavioral approach and psychological approach is important in the modern approach with the changing society changing thoughts of human beings the changes come in the way we approach political science now let's see what is the philosophical approach which is part of the traditional approach now the philosophical approach as you can see is norm based when i say norm based there are certain norms there are certain structures which needs to be followed and it's concerned only with the conclusions which were reached with little or no observation that means whatever the political thinkers thought was right was accepted without putting them to test it's all based on the nature of information or knowledge which is already available the state of affairs the way it was is being followed in the philosophical approach the concepts of justice law liberty democracy etc were classified thinking process of deductive reasoning so they deduced from certain things which happened and that was what it was so there was no space for any scientific experimentation to bring it forth in the philosophical approach you know what is the demerit it's not very verifiable because you don't have any evidence there is no conclusive evidence that we have all that is based on the form of government how the people behaved how the policies were in that period and nothing new can be added into it and human nature was always taken for granted in those days they didn't think that mind could think differently as well and if somebody thought differently from the norms they were branded so philosophical approach was straight jacketed locke aristotle chanakya plato and others all advocated this approach the second one is the legal institutional or the constitutional approach this is a predominant approach of the contemporary politics even today this is something which is practiced because legal institutional approach is very very essential and as applicable today but the roots of this approach goes back to aristotle's times it focuses on formal apparatus of politics or the government and the different institutions of the government though this is also based on description and analysis of the legal rules the conventions which were governing the operations of the government the relationship between the formal institutions which include the government the legislative the courts the legal procedures and it's readily accessible because there are official records to it it's all been recorded the demerits of this approach is that it being criticized as static or lifeless it stresses on the character of the government as one fixed and it neglects the fact that politics is an activity that is it keeps changing it's alive so this approach forgets that there is life in politics as well 
and it also fails to look at the underdeveloped and the backward communities. It's just looking at one set of community and the rules and all the formal institutions are based and formed on that one entity. There's one more demerit of this and that is there is no international politics. It's all about one state. The relationship that, that one state shares with the neighbors or with other countries is not taken into account or is very minimalistic. Because international politics mostly lacks formal institutions and is more characterized by violence. Now let's see what is the behavioral approach. This is the modern approach. This came into force somewhere around the 40s and till today it's very dominant in the field of political science. It looks at the behavior of the individuals and we know that the behavior of individuals vary from time to time and space to space and society to society. The same behavior will not be found in one place and the same in the other. There is always a difference and it's always the small groups. Like we say for every 100 meters there is a change in the way that people speak the same language and that's what's called as a dialect. Hence the behavior of the people also alters in a very very short span of distance. So behavioral approach takes that into account and so it's relatively small group and it's a small group which is the basis of analysis. So behavioral approach is also based on analysis. This is a movement which insists on analyzing the observable behavior while in traditional approach we saw that whatever was observed was believed while in the behavioral approach whatever is observed is again analyzed and then it summarizes the political behavior on the basis of the empirically verified data. But there are demerits to this as well because human behavior is not subject to experimental inquiry and generalization is very difficult. Like I said, human be behavior keeps altering and it's only the mathematical equations that can give it accuracy and more and more mathematical equations are being discovered. Also in behavioral approach, we can only analyze what is the overt behavior or the outside behavior while people may have some other thoughts inside and speak something else on the outside. And that's where the traditional approach came in. It's very difficult to study the external or covert behavior, which is in internal behavior, which also contributes because people say something and then do something else. The next modern approach is the psychological approach. We all know that now the scientists have been studying psychology to understand the behavior of the human being. This approach became dominant in the present times with Graham Wallace's Human Nature in Politics, which came out in 1908. In this publication, he laid emphasis on the socio psychological foundations of the political science. The political phenomenon is defined in terms of psychological forces that form the structure of the politics. Human beings have different psychologies and it believes that the man's actions in politics are not actually guided only by reasons and rationality. There are times when men behave irrationally as well and there are times when things beyond reasons do work. So the political behavior is given by psychological factors like the personality, the attitude, the motivation, etc. The response given by a human being at one point in time will vary due to the moods, due to their motivation level or at that time whatever is happening in their lives and circumstances while at other, other times it may alter, it may vary. Now let's see what is the demerit and that's what becomes the demerit of it because it's difficult to study the personality. 
as many human beings, so many personalities. And the political participation of the human beings vary based on what's happening and what is important to them. It may vary with time. So, psychology is not an absolute empirical science as of now. Yet, the modern approach gives a lot of space for study, analysis, research, finding out. There is a lot of in-depth knowledge that is available and that can be compared with what is already existing, what was already present. Now, there are other popular approaches also to political science. One is of course, the comparative approach where we can compare what is happening presently, bring what was happening in the past and put it now. There is a system analysis approach where we analyze the entire system. The structural and functional analysis approach, as the name suggests, the entire structure and function of the different agencies of the government of politics can be analyzed and of course, the Marxian approach. All these approaches study and clarify the political behavior and the political phenomenon. Thank you.